Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, for this webinar. Today, I would like to talk about protein analysis with a special emphasis on the analysis of recombinant therapeutic antibodies. For this analysis, we offer to use capillary electrophoresis method realized on capillary electrophoresis systems coupled manufactured by our company. So today, it will be all about protein analysis. Content of this presentation. Shortly at the beginning, I will introduce my company, Lumex Instruments Group of Companies. Then we will talk about scientific background of capillary electrophoresis method. We will mention about features and advantages of CE. CE, we say it as a short abbreviation for the term capillary electrophoresis, shortly CE. So then we will talk about the international regulations in the field of therapeutic protein analysis by CE. The most important part of my today's presentation, how our couple C systems can fulfill all the requirements of the United States Pharmacopeia Chapter 129, dealing with the analysis of recombinant therapeutic proteins. And finally, I will definitely mention what else can be done by couple C systems in analytical biotechnology. So let me now start now presentation. First of all, uh, I introduce my company, Lumex Instruments. Uh, this is a, one of the leading manufacturers in analytical instrumentation, and we have more than 20 types of product lines. Uh, on this slide, you see the map, and everything which is colored in blue, these are the countries in which we export our production. Our headquarters are located in Vancouver in Canada and in St. Petersburg, Russia. We have important sales and research offices in Hamburg. This is the most important European office in Germany and in Beijing, China. About 350 highly skilled employees are working on the next worldwide. And once again, we are proud to say that we export our products in more than 80 countries, which are colored in blue on this map. On this slide, you see the most important and well-known instruments manufactured by Lumex Instruments. These are mercury analyzers together with monitors, atomic absorption spectrometers, fluorimeters, near infrared analyzers together with FTIR, PCR analyzers. And at the end you see on the list, you see the capillary electrophoresis systems COPL. Uh, on the photo you see is one of the latest development. It is COPL 105M system. The first COPL instrument was sold already in 1997. So this year we have a kind of celebration of the 20 years existing of this project. And so far, more than 1,600 couple units, now it's more than 1,700 couple units, were sold worldwide. Here you see a short list of fields where these instruments are actively used now, from pharmacological industry and environmental analysis, forensic studies, agriculture, to the very, very complicated biotechnological research, including the analysis of peptides, proteins, providing immune assays, and so on and so on. Let me now shortly explain you how it works. What are the background of capillary electrophoresis as a method? The heart of the system is the capillary. It's a narrow fused silica capillary being filled with just a buffer plain buffer. It can be borate buffer, phosphate buffer, citrate, or whatever. The capillary is being thermostated. There are two ends of the capillary, the inlet and the outlet, and the detector point is placed near the outlet of the capillary. The capillary is a kind of column if you compare it with the liquid chromatography. But the difference is, once again, that the capillary does not contain any solvents, solid solvents. It contains just a buffer. At the first stage, we fill the capillary with appropriate buffer, which is called, in this case, electrolyte. Then we replace the buffer at the inlet of the capillary with a sample vial, and using the highly precisely controlled pressure, we inject a tiny amount of solution in the inlet part of the capillary. After this, we put back the buffer vial, we can take out the sample vial and use, by the way, we can use the sample immediately for any other purposes. And when the buffer vial is placed back at the inlet of the capillary, we switch 
the high voltage on. The, comp the components which were injected in the capillary, all of them, they have different molecular masses and different charges. And therefore, when they start move, moving along the capillary, they move with different velocities. And thus, they reach the detector point at different time points. It means that at the end of analysis, we get the classical sequence of peaks where each peak theoretically represents a certain pure component and the peak area and peak height is directly proportional to the initial concentration of this component in your sample. Once again, the separation occurs due to the differences in electrophoretic mobilities of your components. Charge to mass ratio, a very highly characteristic criteria for each component, plays the most important role in the differentiation in their behavior. Um, very important features if we put all of them all together, because once again, I will not go deeply into details about how the capillary phrases works. First of all, the separation occurs under the influence of the applied electric field. Next, there is a phenomenon which is called electrosmotic flow if it is not suppressed. I will not go deeply into details why, it, why we have this phenomenon, but just to tell you generally, it is a bulk flow of everything which is inside the capillary towards the detector point when you start the high voltage. Therefore, we do not need any pumps like we need them in any kind of chromatography, in HPLC, for example, because here everything goes by themselves to the detector point. Also, electrosmotic flow gives rise to the phenomenon of the very high peak efficiency and thus to the very high potentials of resolution. We don't need any sorbents. Capillary is empty, it is filled just with electrolyte, so we don't have any problems of unspecific binding of the sorbent, we don't have problems of the aging, of its shifting, or so on and so on. And finally, this is a classical separation technique, and thus the information about multiple components is obtained in one run. Okay, this is what was most important about C generally. Um, C is a very unique method of analysis, also because of its universality. Just varying slightly the components in buffer solution or the conditions of analysis, you can create different modes of capillary electrophoresis. From the very simple capillary zone electrophoresis, when you have just a plain buffer inside the capillary to more complicated micellar electrokinetic chromatography when you add a certain surfactant to the buffer in order to provide micellar phase. In most of cases, you add sodium benzoyl sulfate to provide this micellar phase. You can use chiral C when the chiral selector is added to the buffer. In this case, the optical isomers can be separated. And finally, two most important modes when we talk about protein analysis, capillary gel electrophoresis, or shortly CGE, and capillary isoelectric focusing. In the first case, in the case of capillary gel electrophoresis, the capillary is filled with the gel, and there is no any electrosmotic flow. Let me show you it in more details. Capillary gel electrophoresis. Here you see the schematic drawing of the capillary. Uh, minus is at the left side, a plus is at the detector point on the right side. Capillary is filled with appropriate liquid gel. It is not cross-linked gel like you have when you deal with the slab gels, with the SDS page, for example. It's just a linear polymeric solution, but it is gel. It is highly viscous, and you need to apply the special high-pressure mode in order to fill the capillary with this gel. Electrosmotic flow is definitely completely suppressed in this case because the viscosity of the solution is very high. What is important here is that proteins and DNA RNA fragments, oligonucleotides, all of these components are separated according to their molecular masses. Their charges do not play 
any role at all in the separation. In a normal way, when you separate proteins, you first denature them in the presence of SDS under the elevated temperature, and thus you get complexes between SDS and proteins. And when you eject them, you separate complexes, SDS protein. It's more or less, you see, the same as SDS page analysis, but in a capillary format. Human Genome Project was based, by the way, on the uh, sequencing using capillary gel electrophoresis. So it's indeed very important. This is how it looks like at the end after the analysis is finished. Within 14, 15 minutes, you get the separation of several protein standards with different molecular masses, starting from lysozyme of 14.4 kilodeltons up to the very heavy proteins with 116 or even with 200 kilodeltons. Once again, here the proteins are separated solely based on their molecular weights. And what is even more remarkable in this case is the existence of the certain calibration, linear calibration line, the dependence between the logarithm of molecular weight of the components upon the migration time. And thus, molecular masses of separated unknown proteins can be calculated based on this calibration. You need just to add certain protein standard with the known molecular masses to your sample. You get these peaks, and then you create calibration, and then you immediately evaluate the molecular weight of the unknown peaks. Um, now let us come to the general international regulations existing in this field. First of all, the World Health Organization has a recommendation to analyze proteins with a capillary electrophoresis. There are several chapters in the book. First, it is a general chapter, which says that capillary electrophoresis is a well-recognized method in the field of protein analysis. And then there is a certain a specified uh, chapter A336 protein content, which says that the capillary electrophoresis can be used in order to analyze protein conjugates. This is World Health Organization. What is happening with European pharmacopoeia? First, there's a general article about C as a recognized method. It has been included since quite a long time ago. It has a number 2247, and it says, once again, that the method is generally recognized in the field. Besides, there are separated articles for C analysis of several med science like somatropine, erythropoietin, and so on. You see the list uh, on the screen. And it is an absolutely clear tendency that the list will be soon expanded because just several years ago, there were no any articles about CE in European pharmacopoeia. What about United States pharmacopoeia? The general article about CE has been existing since quite a long time ago, but only in the last year, in 2016, a special chapter 129 appeared, analytical procedures for the recombinant therapeutic monoclonal antibodies, chapter 129. And in this chapter, it is clearly stated in all details how capillary gel electrophoresis can be used for the analysis, for the determination of recombinant therapeutic monoclonal antibodies of the IgG class, and how we can, how we use these prescriptions on our instruments, that is what I will show you in the next slides. For example, on this slide, first of all, shortly, what are immunoglobulins? It's molecular, high molecular uh, mass. Uh, proteins of about 160 kilodeltons, consisting of uh, two heavy chains, so-called HC, with a 55 kilodelton H, and two light chains, so-called LC, with about 22, 25 kilodeltons. All these four chains are connected with each other with the help of so-called SS bonds or SS bridges. These are the whole antibody. But besides the whole antibody, 
there are so-called FAB fragments or FAB2 fragments where we have only short parts of these chains, heavy chain and light chain, and these FAB fragments still can bind with a certain antigen. What is important is that the whole IgG and FAB fragments both can be obtained by recombinant technology. And the example of the analysis of such uh, IgGs obtained by recombinant technology is present here. On the left picture, you see two analyses being together in an overlay mode. On the top trace in the red color, you see the analysis of the IgG formulation under reduced conditions, which means that the special agent, I think you know them, it's uh, DDT or beta methanol or whatever, there are similar regions. The special regions were used in order to disrupt all SS bounds within this molecular, which means theoretically it should reveal in only two peaks, light chain and heavy chain separately. This is exactly what we see on the top trace. On the bottom trace, we have the analysis of the same IgG preparation, but under non-reduced conditions, which means it was denatured in the presence of SDS under the elevated temperature and injected in a capillary gel electrolysis. Theoretically, it should reveal only in one peak, the whole IgG molecular. But as you see here, we have several so-called degradation products, including two peaks migrating around four minutes, which definitely represents the light chain traces and the heavy chain traces being present in the final IgG preparation. Seemingly, this IgG was uh, stored most probably, most probably in an improper way, and therefore it degrades slowly. Um, on the right side of the slide, you see four analyses done under reduced conditions being composed together in overlay mode. What is really remarkable is that you see that the bottom trace in the red color, we have the light chain a little bit different from other light chains of other free IgG preparations. And the difference here is only in two kilodaltons. So two kilodaltons is enough to completely resolve one peak from another. If you see on the top trace in blue, you see that the heavy chain peak is, heavy chain peak migrates a little bit slower than the heavy chain peaks of other free IgG preparations. The difference in the molecular weight is only four kilodaltons. So in the range of 50 to 60 kilodaltons, four kilodalton is enough to completely resolve peak one from another. Here on the next slide, we have another example how these prescriptions of USP chapter 129 can be used for the analysis of recombinant therapeutic IgG. You see it under reduced conditions. Once again, all SS bridges were disrupted. So theoretically, we should expect only two major peaks, LC light chain and HC heavy chain. But we see also some other peaks, and we see also some fragments of partially decomposed IgG molecular. If you make the zoom of this range, you see we get two main major peaks, LC and HC, but we also get some impurities, low molecular weight impurities, and we also get the partially degraded IgG molecular. Here it is a complex of heavy chain and light chain specified on the screen as HL, and also the traces of the more heavy complex consisting of two heavy chains here specified is HH migrating at about 11 minutes. What is also remarkable is that, as I mentioned at the beginning, with the help of the calibration, we can estimate the molecular weight of each impurity. We can do it quite accurately within one maximum two kilodaltons range. Uh, 
is, of course, the lower the molecular weight of the uh, impurity of the unknown, uh, unknown peak, the better the accuracy which we assume the molecular weight. And this can be done easily also for the so-called non-glycosylated heavy chain. You see the small peak which appears just before the major peak of the heavy chain, uh, about 8.5 minutes. This is a non-glycosylated part of the heavy chain. And the separation of the non-glycosylated heavy part of the heavy chain uh, can be easily obtained within the capillary drill electrophoresis. The next slide shows you the separation of IgG preparation under non-reduced condition, which means all SS bridges uh, are still intact. Theoretically, we should get only one peak of um, IgG, the whole IgG molecular, which is about 160 kilodeltons. But we also get some impurities. We make a zoom, and we see that we, in, among these impurities is a traces of light chain, traces of non-glycosylated heavy chain. It's about minute eight. It is specified here as HD, uh, HC. Then we have the heavy chain, glycosylated heavy chain peak. We have complex between one heavy chain and one light chain. It is specified here as HL. And finally, we have the big complex, which is specified as HH. It consists of two heavy chains. Um, we have another peak, which is migrating right before the major peak of monoclonal antibodies. But in this case, short capillary was used to speed up the analysis for the price of less resolution. This was a short capillary of only 10 centimeters. Uh, it was enough, anyhow, to resolve the main impurities from one another. But if you want to get better resolution, so whole high performance resolution, you can just increase the capillary by a factor of two, for example, for the price of the increasing the analysis time by a factor of two as well. And then you get the resolution up to the very last complex. For example, the peak which you see at the minute 12, migrating at the minute 12, right before the major peak, it is consisting of two components. First, it is partially degraded uh, antibody, which consists of two heavy chains and one light chain. And then, together in this peak, core eludes uh, the peak, which is called non-glycosylated monoclonal antibody. By the way, you also can see that we managed that we managed to separate all these impurities together with the whole IgG molecular from the aggregates, which are coming at about 15 minutes. So this is how it is. Um, very shortly now, let me summarize the main features and advantages of capillary drill electrophoresis. Of course, we will compare it with uh, SDS page when we make more or less the same analysis but on the slab gels. It is short analysis time. 10, 15, maximum 20 minutes is enough to get complete information about your IgG formulation. There's absence of laborious procedures like staining, destaining, color development, uh, and so on and so on, putting or pipetting of your sample solution into the special pockets of the slab gel. It is pretty laborious. Everybody knows this. And here we don't have all of them. Ability to quantify each protein with a high accuracy and the quantification based on the peak area is definitely much more accurate than the quantification which is based on the comparison of the color intensity uh, between different bands on the slab gel. That's clear. And finally, automatization of the whole analysis to provide sequence of runs in the morning, you can load your auto sampler with uh, several dozens of proteins. doesn't matter whether they are in a reduced or a non-reduced state. You can load them one after another and press one start button, 
and then you get at the end of the day you get the analysis results about all your samples. Automatization here is really excellent. Okay, so what else can be done in analytical biotechnology uh, if you use capillary electrophoresis? The most important thing I would say it is capillary isoelectric focusing. It separates proteins or protein isoforms according to their isoelectric points, which is called PI. It's especially well suited for the analysis of charged heterogeneity of recombinant proteins because if you use recombinant technology, you have normally issues like post-translational modifications PTM. You can issues with uh, glycosylations and so on and so on. And thus the isoforms, protein isoforms, which you get at the end, only slightly differ from each other in terms of molecular masses and charges. And therefore the capillary isoelectric focusing is the most suitable technique to separate them, to analyze them. There are actually two uh, approaches in the field of capillary uh, IF, but uh, if we talk about the routine application of this technique, we should talk about only two stages approach. The capillary is filled completely, not the part of the capillary, but the whole capillary, the entire capillary, is filled with amphalite sample mixture. And then we have two stages. The first stage is focusing, and the second stage is mobilization. Here you see how it works in the schematic drawings. First, on the top you see the capillary, which is filled with amphalites together with sample. It is filled just with pressure, by normal pressure. There is no high voltage at this stage. Then the first stage comes, which is called focusing. You apply the high voltage. pH gradient starts formating inside the capillary, along the capillary. And according to this gradient, your analytes, your proteins, protein isoforms, will move to the points where their net charges are equal to zero, and they stop there. Because if they try to escape from the focus zones, their charge immediately becomes either positive net charge, either positive or negative. And thus, the pH gradient forces them to come back to the position, to the location where their net charge is equal to zero. Therefore, at the end of the focusing stage, we have a situation when nothing is moving inside the capillary. There are certain focused zones in which your protein isoforms are focused. And what you need now is just to have, a, let's say, a photo of the whole capillary, what has happened inside. Therefore, the next stage is called mobilization you need to, as I mentioned, you need to make a photo, or if it is impossible to make a photo of the whole capillary, you need to press out everything which was focused inside the capillary to force them move through the detector point. You can do it by different ways. One of the ways is simply to apply the very low pressure to the inlet of the capillary, but another way is to change the sodium hydroxide vial which is placed on the outlet of the capillary by the appropriate sweeter iron or even by the acetic acid and start again the voltage. Uh, acetic acid, for example, or sweeter iron starts immediately move inside the capillary, um, rapidly goes to the capillary inlet and stops there because it cannot go further. There is a, uh, in this case, it is phosphoric acid which doesn't permit sweeter iron or acetic acid to go further because it will change the charge. So sweeter iron will accumulate at the end of at the inlet of the capillary more and more, thus moving or let's say better said pressing everything which was inside the capillary to move to the outlet, to move to the capillary detector point to the outlet. Thus as you might understand at the end, we get again the very classical picture with a sequence of peaks where each peak represents 
certain protein isoform, and the peak area and the peak height is directly proportional to the initial concentration of this isoform in the sample solution. This is how it looks like. When you separate only PI markers, here it is from 5.5, 7, 9.5, 10, you can create a calibration. And this is a very remarkable in this technique. This calibration is again linear. So if you get the migration time of an unknown component, you can immediately estimate its PI. Um, on this slide, you see how it goes in terms of um, current. On the left side of the slide, you see this red trace. It is a current. At the beginning, when you start focusing, the current is high. Then it falls down quite rapidly, because at the beginning, everything is moving inside the capillary. At the end, nothing is moving. Everything is located at their proper positions. And therefore, current reaches the certain low plateau after 10, maximum 20 minutes of focusing. When it reaches the lower plateau, you change the outlet file from the sodium hydroxide to the appropriate sweeter ion, and you again apply the voltage. Uh, sweeter ion starts moving inside the capillary towards the capillary inlet, and therefore the current, the capillary current, starts slowly increasing, as you see it on the right part of the slide with the red traces. It slowly increases. The peaks which you see on the left part of the slide under the focusing are absolutely not informative for you, so you can forget about this. What really matter is the peaks which you see on the right side of the slide during mobilization stage. Let me have the zoom on this, what we get it here. So this is the zoom, and you see quite clearly we have the separation of all PI markers, and we have the separation of four predominant protein isoforms. Once again, this was a pure IgG, therapeutic IgG preparation, which shows the purity, very high degree of purity, by any other kinds of techniques. And only capillary isoelectric focusing permitted us to separate the protein isoforms. Look what is a very high potential of resolution in this technique. For example, the isoforms with a PI 9.04 and 8.98, the left two left isoforms. The difference in PIs between both of them is just 0 0.06, 0 0.06 of the PI unit. And this difference is enough to resolve them and even to quantify them separately. Um, at the beginning, we get the migration of the most basic isoforms, so the PI marker with the PI 10 comes first. At the end, we get migration of the most acidic isoforms, so the PI marker with acidic PI 5.5 appears last. Once again, here is the separation is due to the differences in the PIs. Thus, with the help of the capillary isoelectric focusing, you can get the separation of even very, very uh, similar protein isoforms, which differ only slightly by carboxy group at the end, or by the absence of a minor group at the end, or the small glycosylation or whatever. This is indeed a very powerful technique. What else? What else can be done if you have capital electrophysis in the field of uh, biotechnology. Affinity studies. What can be studied? Actually, if you get your therapeutic monoclonal recombinant IgG, it is always the question about its affinity. Because if you need to have IgG, it means you need to provide interaction between your IgG and a certain receptor, a certain target protein in an organism, in vivo. Thus, you need to know what about its affinity. Which interactions can be started? Different, antigen, antibody. 
receptolygin, drug or target protein, virus neutralizing antibodies, and etc. What can be determined with the help of this technique? The amount of one of the region in a non-direct mode, so it's an assay, a kind of assay. Affinity constants can be determined, one of the most important parameters when we talk about antigen-antibody interaction. Stoichiometry as well, whether it is one-to-one, -one, one to two, or in terms in case of high molecular weight assemblies like viruses, it can be one to thirty, one to sixty. There are two general affinity CE approaches. Uh, we call it in column affinity interaction with one of the region dissolved in a background electrolyte. This we use in case when the affinities between region A and region B is quite low. Or pre-column incubation of the reactants in case when the affinities are quite high. How it is look like uh, on the drawings? So two general affinity capillary electrophoresis approaches. For the reaction A plus B forms the complex, the affinity complex AB. If we have low affinities, we use the capillary, which is filled with the electrolyte, in which one of the region is dissolved, and then we inject region B. Or for the regions with a high affinity, we use the pre-column incubation. We just mix in a vial regions A and regions B. We wait for the equilibrium for about half an hour, one hour. When the equilibrium is reached, we inject the mixture of A and B into the capillary, which is filled with a plain background electrolyte, which does not contain any traces of any of the regions. Well, most important in this case, in both approaches, in column or off column, affinity interactions affect migration time by uh, studying the migration times of regions we can say everything about the affinity parameters. Um, here you see the photos of one of my best friends. I devoted a certain part of my life studying it. It is a human rhinovirus serotype 2 on the left part of the slide, the core particle of this human rhinovirus. On the right side of the slide, you see the same human rhinovirus but is completely neutralized by the certain monoclonal antibodies, certain IgGs. And the affinity interaction between the viruses and the monoclonal antibodies can be studied by affinity capillary electrophoresis. Here you see how it can be done. On the top trace, you see the blank analysis, the blank run of human rhinovirus only, together with internal standard. Then we start we started adding certain amount of antibodies, increasing amount of antibodies to the viral preparation. And we analyzed them by CE. What can we see? Starting from the second trace from the top, we see that the viral peak becomes lower, broader, and gradually shifts towards a longer migration time. Finally, on the bottom trace, it becomes again narrower, indicating homogeneity, the very high degree of homogeneity, and the peak of free antibodies appears. So, if we know the quantitative information stated on the right part of the slides, I mean the concentration of antibodies added, if we have these six, seven electropherograms one after another, and if we know the molecular weights of both viruses and antibodies used, believe me, we can easily derive all the necessary affinity parameters, like affinity constants, like stoichiometry. This is what we call affinity capillary electrophoresis, and this is how it works. Um, there are, of course, certain instrumental features favorable for protein analysis. Uh, first of all, it's very easy to change capillary set or even a capillary for the multiple protein applications. It takes you just several seconds in order to uh, withdraw the cassette and put another one, thus being prepared for another, uh, pre uh, another separation of a total different group of components. And the flexibility in programming of complex of analysis. 
uh, sometimes you need to provide the complex injection from different files, one after another. The hardware and the software which we developed, all these things permit you to do any kind of complex injection and complex analysis. So finally, uh, let me put together the important considerations. Analytes are free in solution in the field in the case of capillary electrophoresis. This is very important when you study the affinity interactions between antigen and antibodies, for example, because um, every time when you study the interactions by immobilization on the solid support, one of the components, you have a risk that you hamper the conformity, the general conformity of one of the regions. And thus you do not reflect later on when you get the affinity parameters, they probably do not reflect the real in vivo situation. Here in the capillary electrophoresis, both analytes, both regions are free in solution. Economical considerations are also very important. Very low sample consumption. What is injected is normally less than 10 nanoliters. Sample volume which you should put in a sample vial is also very low. It is normally about 20 microliters. And after the injection is accomplished, you can use it for any other purposes. Nothing has happened with your sample solution during injection. We have very low region consumption. It is normally two, three milliliters per day. Okay, if you work very intensively, it might be six milliliters per day, but this is just peanuts compared with the waste which originate from uh, SDS page analysis or any kind of liquid chromatography. And most of these things bring us to the very low analysis cost. So this is most important about the capillary electrophoresis, and let me hope that this was indeed quite important for you and useful for you, and let me also hope the capillary electrophoresis systems couple manufactured by Lumix could be indeed a very right choice for you. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, now I'm ready for any kind of questions, please. Uh, one of the questions is, how is the capital temperature controlled? Uh, here the temperature is controlled, so the capillary is thermostated with a liquid uh, it is water, just a normal bd style deionized water, and the temperature is controlled by the Peltier element. Yeah. So another question, can I have several capillary cassettes with capillaries of different lengths to switch between short time analysis and high resolution analysis? and how fast can I exchange the cassette? Um, yes, of course, you, have, uh, you can have several capillary cassettes for this. Uh, it, you, it can be done even easier. Um, the, each capillary consists of two parts, so-called long part from the inlet to the detector point, and of short part from the detector point to the outlet. If you want to get the short analysis time with a quite pretty good resolution, you can inject from the outlet end of the capillary, and thus you utilize the short and the short part of the capillary. If you are not satisfied with the resolution, and you want to get much more information, you, you want to get resolution up to the very uh, final component, then you can inject the same sample, but from the inlet of the capillary, thus uh, increasing the analysis time, but also increasing the resolution. Yeah. Uh, another question, does the method and protocol meet all the requirements of United States uh, Pharmacopeia Chapter 129? Absolutely, exactly. It meets 
all the requirements which are stated there. Yeah. Uh, another question, could you tell us a bit more about the software you used with the couple instruments? Uh, it's uh, the software which was developed within our company. It is called l 4 and um, this software uh, has all the necessary requirements in order to fulfill the very high GLPA GMP um, standards. So it has different users account. Uh, the raw data cannot be overwritten and cannot be deleted at all, uh, cannot be modified. Um, and what is even more important uh, to my mind, the software permits to provide any kind of complex analysis, including, as you have seen on my examples, two-stage analysis with focusing and mobilization. Uh, with uh, quantitative analysis of proteins and so on and so on. So it is indeed a very, very powerful software. Uh, another question, is it possible to use capillary electrophoresis to analyze protein and DNA conjugation products? Yes, of course, it's possible. Uh, in this case, as far as I understand, it deals with the affinity interaction between protein and DNA, uh, which uh, gives rise to the conjugation of both of them. And it can be analyzed with C, and affinity parameters can be also calculated for this certain uh, type of assay. Yeah. Um, another question? Uh, CG is good to separate non-glycosylated proteins, but glycosylated proteins do not fall on the lines relating logarithm molecular weight and migration time. Um, fortunately, you can run multiple analysis with different concentrations of SDS. Absolutely, you are absolutely right. In order to get rid of this issue, you can run multiple analysis. Why not? Uh, so it's already the answer in this question. Thank you. Um, another question, I'm from the university lab, and I would need this instrument for method development. Can I use the couple system for it, or it is highly dedicated only for the capillary geoelectrophoresis of proteins? Yes, of course, you can use the instrument. The point is that couple instruments is a kind of universal capillary electrophoresis instrument. It is not dedicated for the analysis of the only certain components or the certain group of components, definitely not. Uh, depending upon what you would like to analyze, you can use this or that mode of capillary electrophoresis, switching between analysis of proteins to the analysis of vitamins to the analysis of cations, inorganic cations, inorganic anions, and so on and so on, from the wines to juices to the high-tech biotechnological solutions to the fermentation liquids everything can be analyzed. The problem, the, the question is to find the appropriate conditions for this. This is the most important, yeah. Uh, another question, we need to determine components which are not in your list of developed protocols. Could you provide method development for us? Um, this is always the point for the negotiations, for the discussion. Just tell us exactly what are the components which you would like to analyze by couple C systems, and we can start discussion whether or not it is possible generally uh, to do this. Yeah. So the, there is no more questions. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for this very interesting uh, discussions and presentation of questions as well, and uh, hope to see you later in my email list if you are interested in more details of how capillary electrophoresis can help you in your biotechnological essay. 
thank you very much once again. Bye.